Hello, and welcome to our show, Crooked Doctors. Crooked Doctors, folks. So um, today is Friday? Uh, yes, uh, Friday the 27th, I believe. No, it's no, 20, 21st. The, the 21st. Today 20. is uh, Friday, March 21st, 21st, 2014. That's correct. And we're waiting for Jason Berg to call in. He, right. he called me just uh, about 40 minutes ago and said he would be calling in on a cell phone. So sure. we'll wait for his call. Okay. Um, I, can I can tell you that we're making history. Making history, folks. Okay, we are literally making history. And our audience has watched us get a new law passed in Jersey that helps protect every tenant in the state of New Jersey. This is a law that affects, according to Mitch Kahn, I will cite him as our authority, sure. Uh, from the New Jersey Tenants Organization. Mitch Kahn is a uh, community organizer. Um, and we saw him this week at a big tenants rally in Newark. Um, Actually, a city ca Newark City Council meeting. At yeah, which we re there was a huge... Uh, a representation. That's right. Tenants. And um, according to Mitch Kahn at the, uh, at the New Jersey Tenants Organization, um, at least 75 to 80 percent of the population of a large city in the state of New Jersey, Newark, is tenants. Yeah. So we... As a matter of fact, uh, Eric Martindale did put it more at 90 percent because of uh, the poor people, which can't afford... No, I think it's... But it's pretty, pretty well up there. Go ahead. Okay, so 75 to, to 80 percent, uh, or 70 to 80 percent of the, of the residents of Newark, New Jersey... Yes are um, tenants. tenants. So our new law, which is Senate Bill S-2018. S-2018, folks. Senate Bill S-2018, which was signed into law. By Governor Christie. Folks. By Governor Christie uh, on January 21st, 2014. Yes. Uh, right here. And when Matt Shapiro writes his memoirs, yeah. boy, are they going to knock people's socks off. Now, now we'll <laughs> have to wait like uh, a couple of months, it will be an NJSA number, you know, but it, it's already, it's a done deal. But go ahead. Yes. So, um, so we're making history. I'm going to steal a phrase from, uh, uh, I'm a member of the National Action Network, Reverend Sharpton's group. Right. We are history makers. We are. And uh, now that we've gotten the new law passed in Jersey, state law, yes. the new state law, it's stronger than um, New, New York. York law. So we're already making some contacts to strengthen New York and, law. And right, and the New Jersey law will, uh, how do you say, will drive legislation in New York. In New York right? Yeah, it's not going to happen all at once. So now that we're on a roll, and literally when we get New York law changed, it should be easier because we already have real property law, Section 234, I Just believe. Just has to be strengthened. That's right. That already says if you're a tenant and you win against your landlord, sure. you can recover your attorney's fees. So we don't have to get over that huge hump. barrier. Get over the hump, yeah. All we have to do is tweak New York real property law yeah. and have a, a statement or the sentence of uh, tenants' rights put into the lease. And this is non-controversial, so they sh we should get it through in New York. So it should be easier in New York, but we will manage to strengthen New York law. Absolutely. So, so that will be good. Um, so in these two states, um, what we're doing is we're demonstrating positive change yes, that literally protects tenants. millions. millions of tenants in two states. Okay. And uh, if we set this uh, example of excellence for the we world... Go nationwide, sir. For the yeah. world to follow, we can go nationwide. So I asked Senator Lautenberg, oh, wow. when I first asked him for help, I was like, is it more important, Senator Lautenberg, to hurt Lydia Radin as an individual? And I have the, the, the letter that I wrote. I was yes. required to write a letter to his office, and I said this in my letter, and it's up on the Internet from 2008. Senator Lautenberg, is it more important to hurt Lydia Radin as an individual or to help every tenant in the state of New Jersey? And his heart melted, and he said, okay, well, I'll help you. So that's uh, incidentally, great. Incidentally, uh, Senator, Lo uh, of course, everybody knows that it's recently passed and uh, passed away. And we now have Senator Cory Booker. So maybe uh, Lydia will consider, uh, uh, you know, talking to him in the future. We well, maybe or maybe not. Cory Booker is a, a controversial figure, but we have yes, help uh, all along the way. Across so, the board. Across course. the board. So what we're going to do is continue to make history. Yeah. So. Uh, because I've been doing this show, I uh, got questions from students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine yes. of Yeshiva University. Can you give the overview? 
f a quick overview? Well, I'm going to forego the overview. Well, I'm going to do a quick overview, but um, I'm going to give the big picture, the big picture and the small picture. Very good. Um, I got, I've been talking to not just one, so you don't have to get all weird about it. Yeah, sure. uh, not just one, but a number of different students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University, and mm. they brought up a number of issues. Yes. So there must be some some buzz because I'm getting questions and I'm going to dedicate this show to answering those questions. Sure. Um, I'm also going to dedicate this show to holding the faculty's feet to the fire. So if we push this far, than, far enough yeah. and we're making history, we might as well, in for a penny, yeah. in for a pound. Uh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, I have my handy dandy little life saving device. Yes, that's uh, right. There's a, a recorder, folks. The, the uh, Olympic, Radio Shack. Special. Olympic tape recorder, also available at B&H. Yeah. Um, this is a life saving device. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, I was uh, talking to several students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. They sure. said, uh, you know, your mission is to close the school. And what you're doing is hurting all of us because our, uh, our degrees will now be worthless. A degree from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University is not worth the paper it's printed on. There was no reason to open the school. The purpose of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University is to be a big cash cow for right. Yeshiva University. Sure. Um, they, they, there's. Uh, for the Democratic Party, aren't they a cash cow for, for the Democratic Party? And uh, how does that work with politically? Uh, well, the 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 the, 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 uh, the donors that get a huge yes. tax benefit from Yeshiva University having its tax exemption yeah, also donate to the Democratic Party, of course. and those are the officials that are supposed to enforce the law, and uh, they don't. They don't. Okay, so okay, um, the the uh, the questions I got wa were some of these questions I'm going to answer. Uh, say things like, well, you're hurting all the students and you're hurting all the faculty. No, I'm not. Um, this is a school that violates the, the civil rights of students. Okay. And uh, they said, well, you should just go after individuals. Okay. Well, it wasn't individuals that are just responsible for the harm. Because when I was working with the Yeshiva Victims Group, me and Marlene Abramova, you've heard me mention sure, her before, of course, of course. we sent out over 5,000 emails to the faculty and the student body. And the little bit of a response we got from some students who were more interested in bad-mouthing Marlene than checking out the truth said, sure. so why don't you sit down with us for five minutes, and in five minutes or less, I can show you a few uh, points that show that we're telling the truth. Okay. Okay, so um, I, uh, um, you know, I, I, there were a few responses that we got, and I said, listen, you don't have to believe us. Just sit down with us. We'll take you out. To, we'll, come, we'll come up to the Bronx. There's a little diner in the corner. Sure. Sit down with us for five minutes. Yeah. And in Marlene's case, I'll go through one to three litigation points that show that, that she was expelled without a fair hearing. Sure. And I'll show a few litigation points in my case that show that I was expelled without a fair hearing. And Javon can show you a few litigation sure. points. So in 15 minutes or less, right. We can demonstrate that what's happening here is very wrong, and we didn't ask to be vindicated. We didn't ask to be reinstated. We asked for a simple, fair hearing where, get this, yep. we could be in the room right. to hear the arguments against sure. us. Okay? In the room. So we're talking about our constitutional rights to due process of law. And when, we, when I went to Elie Wiesel, Nobel Peace Prize winner, a Holocaust survivor, I wrote a five-page letter. I sent a delegation to his New York office. Right. Marlene was there. Yeah. Albert Katayoff was there. Sure. Um, and this letter was read to Elie Wiesel, and we said, look, you who have had everything taken from you right. by force, yeah. without the rule of law, Absolutely. cannot in good conscience allow our civil rights to be violated. Right. We were required to stand out in the hall while in a meeting room, our professors gave false, unsworn testimony uh -huh. against us. So, you know, we, sh we have the right to be in the room to hear the arguments against I us. See. And it was horrifying to discover that uh, this is this is an industry-wide problem okay. because, uh, you know, as I go through the long list of, of my persecution, sure. all the people I went, went to, I went to the state attorney general's office, okay. I went to Mel Goldberg, I went to Ben Lawski, I, I gave papers to Andrew Cuomo's state attorney general's office. So when students say, you know, you should, you should, um, 
you should just go after those few individuals. Which few individuals? Right. I mean, I've got a long laundry list of people that we went to in good faith and that violated our rights. Okay. So f 5,000 emails that we sent out. Uh, we went to, um, we went to uh, 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 Victor Seidel. Okay. Okay, Mar I sent Marlen to Victor Seidel. Okay. Physicians for Social Responsibility. M you know, we went to Dr. Seidel. You cannot be socially responsible everywhere but at your own school. Right. And then we went to Elie Wiesel, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Holocaust sure. survivor. Mr., you know, where there is injustice, we must interfere. Well, before you get on that plane and go make trouble for the Arabs in Darfur, right. could you please interfere in your own school? Because we, the students at the medical school, are being denied our basic civil rights. Absolutely. So, in order to make sure that, uh, so the students were asking, well, you know, go to the faculty, go to the faculty. Gotcha. Well, I have a five-minute um, uh, tape-recorded conversation sure. with Dr. Jeffrey Lucy that I'm going to play where he has no plausible deniability. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to give the big picture here. Dr. Jeffrey Lucy Good. Is, uh, has a huge conflict of interest because... Right here, he sits on the faculty of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University. Okay, so this is John Scarfone. He mm -hmm. lied in federal court. He he was associate general counsel. I was named as a witness against him mm -hmm. and Jimmy David. Right. Jimmy David is uh, his Dr. Jeffrey's colleague. Uh, Detective Cologne is the detective from the 34th precinct who lied on the witness stand to illegally incarcerate me. Uh, a, Assistant District Attorney Alex Spiro in Manhattan is the one who suborned Detective Cologne's perjury. Uh, a, a, Assistant District Attorney Alex Spiro is responsible for obstruction of justice and a whole lot of other crimes. Mm -hmm. Now remember, my medical school claimed that, they, that I was harassing them. The, these attorneys, and Dan Rizal also, claimed that I was harassing them. That's not true. I had, and I continue to have, a legitimate purpose in contacting my school to access and correct my records. Right. In fact, I was directed by Senator Lautenberg's office, Chairman Ames up at Montefiore, sure. told me, go talk to John Scarfone, uh -huh. and Judge Patterson told me, my mother and, and the family, a con go, go contact Yeshiva University. Okay. So when I'm contacting Yeshiva University, because I have a legitimate purpose, right. okay, I'm not harassing anyone. Not. So they, well, this is part of the propaganda campaign. I'm the one who was harassed. I'm the one who was stalked. And my stalking and harassment have gone to outrageous um, degrees that almost led to my murder, okay? Now, Dr. Jeffrey Lucy, who sits on the Albert Einstein College of Medicine at Yeshiva University, sure. is also the clinical director at Kingsborough Psychiatric Hospital, okay. where he is in control of Maria Povinetti. Sure. Okay, Maria Povinetti has threatened me. She's male, She's violated an order of protection, yes. and I am forced now to contact Dr. Jeffrey Lucy and say, "Look, I am not this woman's enemy. Uh, I'm sure she's being lied to. I'm yes. sure she's being misled. Sure. Her family, you know, says." Uh, treats her as if she's like an attack dog mm -hmm. and even if there wasn't an order of protection this person should not be threatening me mm -hmm. particularly not now and, and interfering with my peace of mind while I'm dealing with serious health issues yeah. so Dr. Jeffrey Lucy who sits on the faculty of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine okay. in this five-minute tape-recorded conversation that I'm going to play right. has no plausible deniability and I'm doing this for the students at my medical school sure. saying I'm holding his feet to the fire. Right. So this is what we need to know, Dr. Lucy. I'm going to show some, some, um, some verifications. Is, is there the, accountability here? Well, Dr. Lucy, right. here's the question. Are you going to show some strength of character? Right. Are you going to show good, good moral character? Yeah. Are you going to stand up against a corrupt institution? Are you going to be like a surgeon and show some fierce ind independence? Yes. Or are you going to be a coward right. and kowtow mm -hmm. and not give students their civil rights? Are you going to lead Dr. Lucy by ignorance and fear? Because every single student at the medical school is now watching you, Dr. There Lucy. You but first, I want to go to the first tab before we get to this because sure. it's five minutes. Can you go to the first tab? Okay, this is Dr. Jeffrey Lucy. Can you oh. zoom in a little bit, please? Uh, Rich? 
Okay, a little bit. Now, this is the faculty profile. So, Dr. Jeffrey Lucy is a clinical assistant director at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And if you go to the next tab, okay, this is Dr. Jeffrey Lucy's um, profile on link LinkedIn. Uh -huh. Can you zoom in a little bit more? There we go. Okay. And you can see that he's clinical director, if you scroll down just a little bit. He's clinical director at Kingsborough Psychiatric Hospital, where M Maria Povinetti is under his control. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also going to see uh, if you, uh, yep, yeah, that's Dr. Jeffrey Lucy. He started out at the University of Wisconsin in, Ma in Madison. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the next tab, now this is the single most important information that I can give our audience. If you, if you, um, yeah. Uh, this is New York State doc, uh, New York State's uh, 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 physician profile. Uh, New York State, um, can you scroll up just a little bit so I can, s or drop down? This is, uh, no, no, scroll up a little bit more. Scroll away. Uh, can you drop the screen down a little bit? Because this is New York doctor profile. Yeah, this is right there at the top, and that's great. Can you put the, um, can you put the, yeah, right there. This is, uh, can you circle that with the, uh, with the cursor? Okay, so if you want to know anything about a doctor in New York, you type in New York doctor profile, and you can search for doctors. You got their name, you got their license number. Um, if you, you, here I clicked on professional activities, but if you go to education, if you click on the education tab, right, no, no, right, go to education right there. No, 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 keep going. You see where it says education with the little, um, no. <laughs> no, right, right, yeah, drop uh, yeah. the cursor, there you go. See, okay, here we go. Now, I know that this is Dr. Lucy. If you scroll up a little bit, or scroll, yeah, scroll up a little. No, scroll, scroll, yeah. This is, doc, see, this is Dr. Jeffrey Lucy, because he went to the U University of Wisconsin uh, Madison Medical School, right? So I'm cross-referencing. And if you scroll down just a little bit, no, no, keep the Madison up there. You'll see that, you, yeah, just scroll down just a little bit, right there. You'll see he went to, he did his, gradu he did his uh, graduate, medical education. So this is his internship residency. He did that at Jacoby Medical Center. Jacoby is the teaching hospital for the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. So if you go to New York Doctor Profile, I'm cross-referencing, right? You'll see that this is Dr. Jeffrey Lucy. He, he uh, got his medical degree from the University of Wisconsin Medical School. And if you just scroll down a little bit, after he graduated, it looks like he did, no, no, uh, he looks like he did his um, internship um, in Allentown, and then he did his uh, residency in psychiatry at Jacoby. Now, if you scroll up a little bit more, keep going, scrolling up. No, 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 up. Okay, so this is Dr. Jeffrey Lucy. I'm going to get a picture of him, of him. And if you go to um, scroll, to, stay on this page, go to professional activities, and hit on professional activities uh, over in the blue, in the blue bar. Right there, professional activity. See, he's on the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. That's right. Uh, he's on the faculty. These are his teaching responsibilities. Now, what's really great here is he was on the, his teaching responsibilities at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. He's on, on the faculty. He started, the beginning date is June 30th of 1994. Wow. Now, I matriculated That's right. in August of 1994. Okay. So, Dr. Jeffrey Lucy, you've been a uh, psychiatrist. Oh, this should be Jason calling in. You want to grab that? I think this is Jason calling in. So, Dr. Let's see if this is Jason calling in. Jason, stand by, putting you on the air right now. He's on. Hey, Jason, how are you? Hi, Jason. Fantastic. Sorry for the great delay. Day. I was traveling. That's okay. We're, uh, I'm just setting this up, and uh, we're about 20 minutes into the show. And um, what I did was I got, um, we are now making history, and uh, students in my medical school said, you know, why, why are you just uh, attacking the institution? Well, why don't you just attack the few bad apples or uh, the yeah, few right. individuals? Standard thing. Okay, but it wasn't just a few individuals because I went through in the last 20 minutes, you know, the 5,000 emails that we sent out. Are the people that we contacted, contacted like Victor Seidel, Phys Physicians for Social Responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I contacted um, uh, Ellie Wiesel, other, uh, another member of the Board of Trustees. So the, the entire school had 
ample opportunity. And now, most recently, I've been talking to Dr. Jeffrey Lucy. Yep. Oh, this is Jason Berg on the phone. There he is. Okay. Hi, come, Hi, come towards me a little. Okay. Okay. So this is Jason Berg on the phone, and uh, uh, we're going to be managing towards. Um, while we're on a roll, we're going to be managing towards holding the faculty's feet to the fire because students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine deserve to have their civil liberties. They're going to be held, they're going to be held accountable, Jason. So this that's is what right. we're doing at this and show. We're going to hold them accountable, okay? And that's all you can ask for is be responsible for your actions, be uh, doing good trust and fair play. So I reviewed a little bit how Dr. Jeffrey Lucy has a great conflict of interest yes, he because he sits on the faculty of my medical school and mm -hmm. he's in control of Maria Povedetti, That's right. who has, unfortunately, she should be my best friend because I, I've got more evidence that I can share with her, oh, yeah. but unfortunately I think she's being lied to. That's right. so, um, so I've reviewed that Dr. Jeffrey Lucy has a huge conflict of interest and uh, he's gotten phone calls, so has his superior, saying, look, if this, you let this person go and Lydia Raiden comes to harm, we're going to hold you personally accountable. But right now, we're going to hold you personally accountable for being on the faculty and denying students, you can come back to us, mm -hmm. denying students their civil rights. So I got a five-minute uh, video, ta uh, audio tape here where I hold Dr. Lucy's feet to the fire. Sure. And what we're going to find out in real time, and I'm speaking to all the students at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, is your faculty, is a member of your faculty going to stand up to a corrupt institution and make sure that he leads through uh, you know, uh, uh, I hate to steal from the military, but I'm about to, right. through loyalty and fair play, right. or does he control his subordinates yeah. through uh, ignorance and fear? Right, right now, we've got an industry-wide problem where the medical profession sure. uh, controls their subordinates, us, the medical school students, through ignorance and fear. I see. Okay. So... Um, I was just going over a little bit uh, who Dr. Jeffrey Lucy is, and can you go back to the tabs for a minute on the Skype computer? Okay. The interesting about when people live in fear, ignorance, they don't think for themselves, and if they're true men of their character, they will question living, being fearless and think for themselves. But when you are part of the few that don't dare, you are part of the minion. So um, you're coming in a little bit um, garbled. garbled because you're on a <laughs> cell phone. On a cell. But you know, oh. we're all out in the field and we're all doing the best we can. But you've made a, a, an incredibly important insight. And it's interesting that you're saying this to like the psychiatrist at my medical school. But um, what Jason said was, um, your uh, people. Uh, uh, can you repeat that again? When, when you try to leak, when people live in ignorance, fear, and don't think for themselves, are being controlled, and it's ninety-eight percent of mankind. When you live in enlightenment and you're fearless and you think for yourselves, you become a threat to the establishment. And the more that people come out of their closet of fear, the more that we're going to see truth, justice, and fair play, and a better society come to grip. Right now, we don't see that, and we actually see more people going into this mold of, of becoming a worm and squirming around looking for salvation and are being eaten up by their fellow man. That was very insightful, and the fact that you're saying this to a school that purports to hold itself out as having expertise in psychiatry sure. is very good. Thank you, Jason. It's, it's not psychology as much as a stupidity, because if they were really truly dealing with psychology, they would want to see every person be better than they are. Why? Great teachers create great students to question everything, make things better and improve what needs to be done. 
So the real tragedy here is you have a school that purports to specialize in psychiatry or to hold themselves to the general out to the general public sure. uh, as uh, having professing to have expertise in psychiatry Absolutely. and in fact they don't inspire or lead or help their students read their reach their fullest potential sure. instead they keep their students in ignorance and fear and they try to control them through ignorance and fear mm -hmm. and someone who come, like me who comes along once in a lifetime and says I'm not having it that's the person they try to destroy well what's happening uh, Lydia do you upset the apple cart do you rock the boat Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to hold Dr. Uh, Lucy's feet, feet to the fire. Yeah. And um, uh, so we got, we got the, can you go back to the website for just a moment? So this is Dr. Lucy, and you can take this as well. This is Dr. Lucy at the uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Right. Uh, we're we're, we're going to test his character now. Okay. And we're going to see in upcoming weeks and months. Um, so Dr. Lucy, um, you know, are you a person of good moral character? Okay. Um, do, you sh are, do you have the ability to lead? Do you continue to oppress your students and every student? So we're going to see now. So I got enough on this audio tape that I'm going to play that I hold Dr. Lucy's feet to the fire. Okay. So if you come back to me for a second. Boy, you know, I can tell he's going to hate me for this. <laughs> we're going to do it now because you have to get it in. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're running out of time, so I got to get this in. Okay. So we're going to listen to this and... This is a conversation that I had with Dr. Lucy. We, we started out discussing Maria, you sure. know, because uh, if Maria is successful in, uh, in uh, murdering me, which I'm sure that these people want to have happened. By the way, Jimmy David is a colleague. We'll get, can you show Jimmy David's uh, uh, photo, pro, yeah, profile just one second? Profile. So you know, this is your colleague at the Albert Einstein. It says Dr. Dr. Jimmy David. Not, yeah, Dr. Jimmy crazy. David. Yeah, he was a complaining witness against which me. Which one is he? Uh, well, no, his picture isn't up. I'm just showing oh, that he's, oh, on sure. he's on the faculty. Okay, so that's... Uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Lucy, his colleague is James David. James David I, is a liar. I, I was named as a witness against him. So I'm sure that all these people, the, all these folks would like to see me dead because at the very least they're going to be disbarred, have their licenses to practice revoked. Okay, okay so um, let's see. Let me take my mic. No, yeah, it's five minutes and 23 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation. Hold on. I'm stuck now. Uh-oh. Hold on. Oh, just one second. I have to squeeze this and see the mic. Hold on. Ah. There we go. Well, not completely free. All right. Okay. No All right. Well, we make it work. <laughs> so um, I had this conversation with Dr. Lucy um, on Tuesday. March 18th, 2014, uh -huh. and if Dr. Lucy doesn't do the right thing, well, then that means that Dr. Lucy is now a co-conspirator in uh, the ongoing crimes against Lydia Radin. Okay, so, okay, so here we good. go. Ready? Go. All right. Oh, good. I'm free. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, 
and if the police won't protect me, you're putting me in a very dangerous situation. What would you have me do, Dr. Lucy? You are on the faculty of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University. I'm suing these people, okay? They've suborned perjury. And if Maria beats me up, I have very serious spinal injuries. My medical records will, will run past the federal judge. I get beaten up again, I could wind up paralyzed or dead. It's not fun for me, okay? I didn't have a good time while, while a university persecuted me for over 20 years. And by the way, there's another school that persecuted another victim of federal student loan fraud for over 26 years. So when, you know, I get feedback from Peg Haran, oh, poo poo, it's not unique to me. Apparently, these crimes happen because the regulatory agencies let them have it happen. Okay, I appreciate the information. Okay, have a good day. I'm not going to have a good day, Dr. Lucy. I live in fear of the looming threat of physical violence of Maria Povinetti, and you're in charge of her. And her family describes her to me as if she were an attack dog, like not even a human being. Again, thank you for the information. And what Maria Povinetti would be enlightened to know is, I think she got into jail during this last round uh, because the district attorney, David Kelly, didn't do an investigation. Because if he did, he would know that Precious Povinetti and Etovina Povinetti both have no credibility. And all of the driving force here was Mark Povinetti to drop kick Maria into jail. Because guess what? Mark and Precious have been have been stealing from Etovina for years. I got the bank records that. Show it. Ms. Raiden, thank you. You told me all this before, so I appreciate the information again. Okay, well, the new information is I've got phone calls as recently as yesterday from Maria's friend who calls the hospital and calls me. So that's third party contact. Even if you don't respect the order of protection, I still don't deserve to be beaten up by someone in your control. And I'm sure that John Scarfone, Associate General Counsel of Yeshiva University, who lied in federal court is going to be disbarred, would love to see me dead. All right. Well, I have to prepare for my next meeting, so thank you for the information, and we'll, we'll look into matters. And, and you can go to the police also if you'd like. The to. police are not going to help me, sir, because if I told you up teen times, Detective Cologne lied on the witness stand, and Assistant District Attorney Alex Spiro in Manhattan suborned perjury, a very serious crime. So that means Alex Spiro gets prosecuted, disbarred. The Detective Cologne is probably going to lose his pension and be prosecuted. So I don't think the police are going to help me, sir. And all of this comes down to Dan Rizal, Martin Bogstein, Jimmy David, your colleague, Jimmy David, who runs around behind my back telling people I'm his patient. I was never his patient. The man is a psychopath. Your colleagues at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine are a group of psychopaths. Thank God that I got them to admit, to stipulate, that they fraudulently induced me into entering their school based on false promises. And I'm not the only victim of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University. This is a profoundly disturbed institution. They, they expel students in violation of their civil rights. And you, as a faculty member, could start doing something to put a stop to it. This would be bad anywhere, but it's outrageous that it's, it's in a school that was built by Holocaust survivors like Ellie Wiesel, who sat, sits on the board of trustees and beats his breast about how he lost everything without the rule of law through force. And he would allow me and other students to be expelled in violation of our civil rights. Have a good day, Ms. Reed. I'm going to have to hang up now. Okay? okay, so you know enough to know that you, your colleagues at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine are a bunch of criminals. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. And these are the people who wonder why the Holocaust uh, uh, happened. Hi, Lydia. Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, just a quick peek. This was your platform, I know. But if you talk a little softer, explain yourself, maybe you have got a better reaction instead of being on the pulpit. I know you have a lot to say, but you needed to have him say something. So the next time you speak to someone that you want to crucify, do it softly. Let them hang themselves. That's my suggestion, because I have spoken to person in the in Hunter County law 
law department regarding being almost arrested for distributing information on the campus of 595 New York And he's been there for 25, 30 years. And this is the first time anyone questioned the authority of I'm listening. the distribution of information. So I'm just getting back with me, and I explain more stuff. But again, a soft-spoken person, without having to beat someone, will get you more reply and let them consume what you have, and then, therefore, you can get more out of them. I, I do. Jason wants me to be uh, more restrained. Um, uh, the um, I got two thoughts. Uh, first of all, it's good advice. Second of all, um, you got to understand that. Um, how do I say this? Um, there would be something wrong with me if I wasn't angry. I understand that. I'm as angry as you. Within the three years of working with Toastmasters. I focus my anger on my passion, and I no longer salivate when I speak, and I get my point across, and I don't lose it. Other people lose it. Um, well, I don't think I lose it. I think I'm uh, a driving force, and you got to understand it's also probably a very carefully crafted persona. Well, I, I'm not saying what you do is wrong. I'm just suggesting that you are very knowledgeable and you overwhelm your person you're speaking with like a spider. You suck the hell out of them. <laughs> I think Bill got it. <laughs> Did you get it, Bill? Yeah, I, I, I feel it's, a, uh, it's, it's good advice nonetheless because you have to... Uh, uh, from time to time, you could be a little more restrained to elicit a response. Is basically what you you know get them on record as saying something. But if you were beating them over the head, you won't give them a chance. To, well, they'd be on defensive, and you actually they're not saying anything. You uh, would I, believe yeah. the conversations I have with Dr. Lucy. Yeah. So I think Dr. Lucy just got hip to the fact that he was being tape recorded. Uh, so the purpose of this was not so much to have Dr. Lucy do anything, but but I got gotcha. you. Uh, you have no plausible deniability, Dr. Lucy. Well, you, you just gave him the information, and you were hitting with it. It doesn't mean he was responding. He was being very gracious. And he, if I was him and someone was a, that vigilant and poignant and tongue-sharp, uh, I would say, thank you very much, have a nice day, and... Goodbye. Well, that's what Very you, quickly. That's what I, I do have that prosecutorial. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I would say you have a Christy prosecutorial uh, point. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you sort of get trained a certain way, and then it kind of sticks with you. Oh, yeah. um, Go ahead. So I guess I, what you're saying, Jason, is that it would be it would be in my best interest to in moderate the, in the future. <laughs> to switch gears because that way I could show versatility. Right. And you give the opportunity of the person to speak. No, well, I can't really say what's going on with others. Yeah. I know that I understand X. I performed in another point of Y, and I can't be responsible what others do, but I did the best in my part to help you that way. He has an out, and you don't want to never put someone in a corner because, like a rat, it will come into your face. Uh, true. You uh, have to some, uh, elicit a response. I think that's what Jason's getting. Yeah, at. my purpose in this phone call with Dr. Lucy was not to get a response. My my purpose was to um, Let talk. Him know you as, got the goods on. Yeah, him. talk as fast as I could. So he had no plausible deniability because the purpose of this five-minute audio tape is to put it up on the internet and then have the entire student body 
Well, well, he didn't even have a new opportunity to respond. But he wouldn't. He's been dodging me for, for he got hip to me pretty quick. He's been dodging me, making up excuses. Oh, uh, I well, actually, but, but at least if he said, I don't know. He knows. Ex and, and, and let him hang himself. He knows. He you, you, you don't have all the other um, tape recorded conversations. The purpose of... The person, you, the purpose of this was I got a phone call from the students and they said it's a few bad apples. No, it's not. Okay. But hey, if you want me to get a faculty member to show you what a coward he is and how, uh, but Dr. Lucy could surprise us yeah. because for this, for the answers to these questions mm -hmm. and others, yeah. will Dr. Lucy do the right thing? Will he stand up? Or, or will he go down with the ship? I think, I think or is he another right. rat? You know, so that's deserting the ship. Yeah. So you know something, uh, we have a huge audience at the Albert Einstein. Eight hundred over eight hundred medical students are now watching you, Doctor Lucy, because this is a test of your character. You what spot. are you gonna? Yeah, he is on the spot. You're on a hot seat. So, Doctor Lucy, I want to see the written, published, faculty approved. You know, Doctor Lucy could turn out to be a great big hero. He'd have to get a special commendation. It could happen. Where he actually compelled his colleagues to um, make a written, published, faculty-approved hearing procedure to do the right thing. That's good. I'd love to see that, wouldn't you? Well, we'll see. Uh, and, and if he had the courage to do that, yes, he's a hero. Because a coward dies a thousand times, yeah, and a hero true. dies once. But I'd rather die that one time in glory than have to cowl in the dark. Now, wow. um, the other issue I wanted to bring up when we have, like, um, and you, you know what you're talking about, right, Jason, because you uh, were in the Marines. Yes. And, you know, I talked to, you know, I talked to Mayor Healy this week. Oh, really? She yeah, you left. Mayor Healy. You uh, left. You left the courthouse. Uh, Mayor Healy had some really interesting things to say about Steve Fulop. He's not really a Marine. Um, you know, he, he uh, still has the papers. What he does after, as a civilian, yeah. is nothing to do with him being a Marine. It has to do with him being a civil servant serpent. And to put it on even more, there was an editorial on the Mayor Stephen meeting. It came back like a top secret, blacked out meeting stuff. Uh, yeah. Only thing I know from the editorial, once you enter the public realm, you you no longer have any privacy. You are at the whim of serve your oath of office, which is to protect and serve the I mean, the Constitution, and your bond is the same. If your bond and oath become violated, you will not be able to be a server in that title. And this is going to happen to a lot of judges and other elected and appointed officials in New Jersey and the rest of the United States. This is what's coming down with common law grand jury. Okay, okay so Jason, to, I got a lot to say about this because yeah, yeah, there's stuff to. you don't know, but you're going to love it. So yeah, I'm going to save it probably the, for the next, next two shows. shows right. Okay, but here's what you do now. Right. Judge uh, Vera L. Can you help me pronounce the name? Uh, Vera L. Scanlon. Scanlon. Okay. Has no plausible deniability because I put this document in her hand. That's right. Okay. And you can see she got it on this date. Now, what's in this document is I pointed out to her, because these are some of the questions that I got. Right. Oh, look. What? Here are all the students that are suing in the Southern District of New York. They were victimized by federal student loan fraud. Oh, okay, th th this just came out, mm -hmm. right? They've persecuted, if you go to the, uh, right here, uh, I want to go to this one right here. Yeah. One poor woman has been victimized for 26 years. Wow. Okay, so all the regulatory agencies, all the individuals, all the people who are responsible. This poor woman, I've been persecuted with federal student loan fraud for over 20 years. Exactly. So when Dr. Caligdon, the crooked doctor at yeah. Rikers Island says, all these people 
we're persecuting you? It's hard to believe. Really, Dr. Kaligian? Because it's true. Yeah. And here's all the people that have participated in this woman's persecution wow. because the individuals and the regulatory agencies have been co-opted. Right. Okay? So, and, uh, so they're in, I want to give the big picture right here. Okay, so this is where these four students right now, they're in the Southern District of New York, That's okay? Right. And they're suing in federal court and they've been victimized by federal student loan fraud. That's right. Now, I came before them. So this is gonna be really interesting to see, Jason, because right now we're making history because I'm holding these federal judges' feet to the fire. That's right. Now, here's the, the questions we're gonna answer in the upcoming weeks and months. If they apply the fabricated ruling, they made up rulings, the right. Second Circuit Court of Appeals, all these federal judges, may, and Judge Patterson here, made up rulings that they applied to me. Wow. But look, here's four more students with, with a very similar fact pattern as me. Coming forward, folks. Right. So they're suing right now. Right. So if the law is upheld for them and they get justice, okay, then how do you account for my continuing pro persecution? They can't have one without the other. Oh, because Jason, we're shaking things up like you have no idea. I believe you are. And the thing is, is that you are in there for the long haul. Other people who have been quitting a long time quit. ago. Yeah. And you are res restitution will come because of your resolution and your to be there to the end. Right. There is no greater person than a person who stays in after you've fallen down, you get up, and the odds are against you. But you keep on saying, I'm looking at the end of the race. I'm going to finish that goal. You and I are a winner, loser, when you finish that race because you're still a winner in your heart. No one can take that away. That's right. A true failure is when a person stops what they're doing. Gives up. That's a true failure. So what we're doing is yeah. we're shaking up the system. Absolutely. Okay. And Jason, I gave these federal judges in the Eastern District of New York, because that's where I'm suing now, and wait till they get my paperwork. Okay. I gave them the Supreme Court case where Judge Scalia talks about the common law grand jury. Great. So they're ignoring this. So I'm like, but, but wait can't. a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Here's the but, questions but, we're going to answer. But listen, mm -hmm. in New York State, there are so many points that it's based on common law. And what's happening in New York is that they're violating and even ignoring the common law. And all these federal judges in New York are also in the domain of New York. Even though they are federally part of the federal system, you're still responsible for where you reside. And if they're not even abiding by the common law, they will be taken to suit, have their oath revoked, and the liens made against them. And in New York State, the controller pays for the judges uh, by well, you're talking and about state judges. Of I'm New talking about Jason. Are being taxed for something that the judge should be paying his or herself. Jason, I'm talking about federal judges. You're talking about state judges, so that's but germane. But I'm talking about all judges. Mm -hmm. And in federal court, what you do when you got federal judges who ignore. Uh, Justice, this is Supreme Court judges, Judge Scalia. So when. You know, I think we need to make a phone call to the Supreme Court and say, well, Judge Scalia, I don't understand. Isn't this supposed to be a hierarchical system where the lower court judges are supposed to listen to you? I don't think they're listening to you, Judge Scalia. That's very, very bad. They're all doing their own thing, folks. They can't do that, Judge Scalia. They're supposed to listen to you as a Supreme Court judge. And I gave them your paperwork, so I'm going to have to follow up with the House Judiciary Committee. Uh-oh. They could be removed from the bench. Uh, there are many rules that they have violated. Because if they don't allow the evidence to come in, they withhold evidence, they destroy evidence. They can get up to 20 years plus fine or both. And if there are multiple counts, they could be in prison for the rest of eternity. And 
we get to sue their estates and yes, raise a whole can. lot of money to continue this good work. Continue to fight. Folks. So right now, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but right now we got a federal judge right. who has this information, and now they're going to start squirming. Because if you don't uphold the law for these students, right. we got four more victims of federal student loan fraud. There you go. And if you do uphold the law for these students, how do you account for Lydia Raiden? Well, how about even people who are not even in this court case, in other institutions that are serving and being served this service by their civil servants and the institutions that are abusing them. Right. Remember, in civil law, there has to be a victim. Yeah. The state cannot be a victim. And if the victim is not taken care of, the individual will sue on one point, and then they have punitive damages and other psychological damages that will add up to millions and millions of dollars. And oh, oh, Jason. Uh, um, apparently, from the case of a woman in Brooklyn who's challenging the state court judges appropriately, uh, her, they tried to intimidate her husband by go. illegally incarcerating him in Rikers Island. Happens and he's time. suing for $50,000. 50 large, folks. Per day. So if you multiply the 11 months of my illegal incarceration times $50,000 per day, nice you get a change. number close to $20 million. Nice change. Times yes. three for triple damages, you're up to $60 million. That'll pay the rent. Okay. Okay. The narrow point is this man went into Rikers Island. And Rikers Island is a toxic waste dump that needs to be closed. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. But before we get too far afield, because we've got about 10 minutes left, yeah, yeah. what I want to show is um, there, there, for the students of federal student loan fraud, right. <coughs> what you need to see here, and this, this is some of the uh, fabricated rulings in my case, uh -huh. they claimed there was no breach of fiduciary duty, uh -huh. okay? <coughs> <coughs> and they cited to Moy. So for you out there, can you can you um, zoom in a little bit this m uh, more? Oh, there you go. Okay, they cited to Moy, but Moy quoted the um, the wrong section of the Code of Federal Regulations. Yeah, okay, so you can sue. You got six years breach of fiduciary duty, and here now remember uh, Judge Chen and Judge Scanlon have this. This is the appropriate. And uh, let me just get the uh, this is the appropriate section to cite. There is an explicitly stated fiduciary duty. Moy cited the wrong section. And right here, this is what you want to see. So if you just uh, zoom in a little. The school, there's an explicitly stated fiduciary duty where the school, and I'm going to read it, the school, the school as a fiduciary for the benefit of the guarantee agency the secretary, that's the U.S. Secretary of Education, and the student, the school as a fiduciary for the student. Okay, there's an explicitly stated fiduciary duty. Judge Patterson was wrong. Right. The, the appeals judges were wrong. The entire Second, certain, Second Circuit Court of Appeals was wrong. Okay. And so now, Jason, I'm reaching out to these students, and I'm going to provide this information to them and to the other students from my medical school that called me and say there's an explicitly stated fiduciary duty right. and you sue six year statute of limitations for breach of fiduciary duty. Now, here's the other thing you want to see, right? Wait, wait, well, wait, right here. Wait, 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 oh, let wait, me just wait, do this real quick and then I'll give you time, Jason. You gotta get it in, Jason. Okay, right. so um, my amended complaint, they said, identified no bulletin, student guide, or compendium uh, that allows a former student to correct her, her ACOM records okay. from the Albert Einstein College of Records. Yeah. But in fact, I did, and appropriately, I sought to expand and correct the record, because uh, this is page 22 uh, of my college bulletin. This is in front of federal judges, and the student records policy is to point to federal law. Mm -hmm. And federal law says, that, yeah, I mean, not only did I seek to expand and correct the record. That's right. Okay, so this is page 22 of the college bulletin. That's right. Here you go. 
the student records policy is to cite to federal law, which is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Absolutely. Act of 1974, which says that, of course, I, as a former student, have the right to access and correct my records. Right. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is you want to go to, um, if you go to the other tab, Okay. When you cite the Code of Federal Regulations, right. go to the Code of Federal Regulations, the yeah. very last tab. This one. Okay, so this is it. This is the Code of Federal Regulations. And if you zoom in, uh, this is one of many, this is going to be 34 CFR section 668.15, Factors of Financial Responsibility. Right. And the school is only financially responsible that would allow it to administer federal student loan programs. I see. If it is providing, if could you put the cursor under, if it is providing the services described in its official publications and statements. That's uh -huh. item one. So it's uh, 34, the way you cite to this is 34 CFR section 668.15B1. These are the general standards of financial responsibility and the school is only considered to be financially responsible if it provides the services described in its official publications and statements. It does not. Because if you come back to me, and we'll continue next week, remember, I got the school stipulating. You got them. This is, this is page 364 of my criminal trial transcript. Yeah, that's right. And their official statements and publications they promised that they would support student research 100%, and there was absolutely no support for my project, contrary to the College of Medicine's promises that they support student research 100%. So not only did they misrepresent, but they also are financially irresponsible because they do not provide the services that they describe in their official statements and publications so and this is this the entire boom. school committing fraud fraud, fraud, fraud. and more fraud, more fraud and an ongoing criminal conspiracy and end, to and defraud yeah. jason go ahead is that if they had a half a brain they'd be half as dangerous but they're totally dangerous any person who wants to be successful will never let his institution go beyond their means, and by them not supporting your goals, they forfeit and they defrauded you, the American people, sure. and the people who are of uh, or Jewish, because that's a stain against every Jewish person sure. in the United States and world, because the Jews are supposed to be this outstanding leader for their God. Sure. And it's a very big stain if you are a Sedum or other religious group to be pious and you are biased and you are, I don't know. Totally well, you know, for a religious institution, didn't they bear, they bore false witness? Excuse yeah. me? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse they, they me? So witness. that's that's by the Ten Commandments, they bear full witness, and by common law and the law of God, they're responsible for their actions, and they need to pay three times I put the whatever the number that you come up with. Well, uh, like and Mark, the, uh, Jason, like uh, white and sepulchers, sepulchers, they're full of dead man's bones. This is Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, there it is, an indictment of the Pharisees, if you would, in your own words. Go ahead. Yeah. But again, you continue the whole point of education you. is to make sure, one, your students are better than you. They go out to be even better in a community, and they help others be better in their community. And it's, raised, it's like cream, the best raised to the top. That's it, folks. Not uh, like stay tuned, folks. Bye. We're out. <laughs>